If you like snakes and you want to find more of them in the wild, coming up are six great tips to help you achieve just that. Stay tuned. So, if you guys are anything like me, you watch shows on Discovery Channel or on YouTube and you see people finding all sorts of awesome snakes and you ask yourself, how come I don't find these things? Maybe I find a garter now and then, but that's about it. Well, here are some great tips to really increase your odds for finding more snakes out there. The first one is time of day. The morning, early morning, is a great time to find them because they're either getting ready for the hunt for the day, soaking up that, those first rays of sunlight and heat to get ready, you know? Or they're coming back, you know, from a night of hunting, back to their dens to digest their food and sleep the day off. So early morning is really good. Also, early evening before it's totally dark out is another great time. Those are the night snakes getting ready to go hunting for the evening, you know? And they'll be soaking up the last bit of heat for the day to, you know, charge themselves up for the hunt. Great time. You also have some diurnal snakes that might be coming back from the hunt, you know, to their dens just like in the morning. So, early morning, early evening, great times to find snakes. Number two, keep your eyes open for logs in the woods, you know, flat rocks and things like that. I don't know how many times I find snakes under logs. That's a great place to find ringneck snakes, garter snakes, red-bellied snakes, and all sorts of other snakes. You know. Uh, flat rocks is also just as good as logs, but you have to keep in mind, if you're flipping one of these things over, roll it towards you rather than away. That way if something dangerous is under there, like maybe a venomous snake, scorpion, spider, wasps, things like that, if it's going to flee, you want it to go away from you rather than towards you. So always roll the, the log or the rock towards you. That's very important. And make sure you replace those things exactly how they were or next time you go out there, there's not gonna be anything there. I have to tell you, you've gotta be persistent. It's usually that last rock or that last log that reveals the prize. Oh, a snake! Are you serious? Yeah! Tip number three is actually just an extension of tip number two, and that's keeping your eyes open for piles of logs and piles of rocks. Those provide all sorts of nooks and crannies for them to hide underneath and maybe sleep the day or night off. Also, they provide good surfaces for them to lay on top and soak up the heat and sunlight. Those piles of logs and rocks often go underground too, and they become hibernaculums. Those are places where lots of snakes will hibernate throughout the winter and also the hottest days of the summer. It's a thing called estivation. In fact, here's a link to one of my videos talking about hibernaculums. I hope you enjoy it. Number four is just a great tip to find all sorts of things, and that is find bodies of water. Creeks, rivers, streams, ponds, lakes, those are great places to find snakes and all sorts of other wildlife too. And that's because, well, everything needs water, right? If you want to find a good snake, figure out what it eats and then go look for its food supply. Lots of things, lots of wildlife is found near water. You've got fish, crayfish, mice, insects, frogs, tadpoles, all sorts of other stuff that, that snakes love to eat. And don't forget, swamps and wetlands are the best places to find just about everything. Number five is actually a really fun way to go out with a friend and find snakes, and that is called road cruising. You just hop in the car, find some uh, nice back-end roads out in the country or semi-suburban areas, and just drive along at like 20 miles an hour, scouting the road and the shoulders for snakes soaking up that sunlight or crossing the road. Sometimes you find turtles, skunks, possums, foxes, deer, all sorts of other things doing the same thing. And it's a lot of fun. You could do it late at night, early in the evening, even on rainy days because you're under that, that roof of the car, and of course in the morning. But please make sure you're watching out for other motorists. If you see something, put on the hazards, pull over to the side, and you know carefully and safely observe it. If it's a turtle or something crossing the road, Maybe you want to help it across to the side it's facing, not the side it's coming from. But number one rule, make sure you don't get hit by a car. Maybe wear a reflective vest and a flashlight on your head or something. Okay, just a really important rule there. Finally, tip number six, 
find yourself some abandoned lots. Those are great places because you have human civilization being reclaimed by nature. They're wonderful places to find brown snakes, actually. Um, also, some uh, milk snakes if it's next to an old farm or homestead. You've got parking lots that are eroding away and weeds kind of filling them in. So there's lots of places to soak up heat and there's usually lots of debris left behind. Old boards, maybe pieces of uh, the building itself, TVs and all sorts of junk that's really frustrating but it happens to provide good cover for one, their food sources like worms and mice and things, and two, for the snakes themselves. Again, be safe. Don't go walking into a building that's about to collapse on you. So check out the abandoned lots, but don't trespass. Now before this video is finished, I'm going to give you one more tip. We can call this tip number seven. And it's a practice that a lot of herpers do because it usually yields so much success. And that's something we call seeding or boarding. You find a good habitat, maybe out in a field, next to a, the edge of a forest, or just next to any of these good habitats, and you place out a lot of flat boards. Some of them can be made out of wood, plastic, metal. You can have light ones, you can have dark ones, and that way it provides the snakes with all sorts of different temperature variations to hide underneath these boards. But you might find some places where there's already boards placed out. That means somebody else is putting them out there and hopes to find snakes or other wildlife. If you find one of these places, one, you don't tell your friends. In fact, whenever you find a cool snake, unless it's like a garter snake or water snake, you generally don't tell your friends or definitely don't post it on social media. That's a big taboo thing to do, in fact. And that's because you go back there in the future, there won't be anything left. You know, people sometimes even catch these things for pets or they tell everybody and everyone goes looking there and finally the snakes are like, you know, I've had it, I'm going somewhere else. Just like everything else, when you flip these boards or rocks, you have to put them back exactly how they were. You know, it takes a couple years for the habitats underneath them to be just right for wildlife to call it a home. And uh, if you're flipping someone else's stuff, they're going to get really, really mad at you. Anyways, those are some really great tips for finding more snakes while out on your adventures. And I hope you guys do so. Like I said, keep in mind, you've got to be very safe when doing these things. You've got to watch out for wasps, venomous snakes, maybe certain types of spiders, motorists. There are a lot of hazards out there, so you've got to be safe. And it's always great to bring a friend along with you so that you can share the excitement. Anyhow, thanks a lot for watching, guys. Once again, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out. So. Thanks a lot for watching, and remember, if you like this video, be sure to check out this video over here that YouTube has selected specifically for you based on your watch time. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button, but you gotta click the bell icon, because if you don't, YouTube will never let you know when a new video of mine comes out. And remember, passion inspires spirit.